folks, and welcome to Typology, the show in which we explore the mystery of the human personality through the lens of the Enneagram. My name is Anthony Skinner. I'm the producer of the show, and we hope you have had a wonderful holiday season, that you've enjoyed time with friends and family, and that you are headed into a fantastic new year. For the new year, we have a special family episode replay with the Cron family. The whole family shares their insights about how the Enneagram has helped them personally and with family dynamics. So you're really gonna enjoy this show. Without any further ado, here is the Cron family with the host of this show, Ian Cron. Hey, Typology Tribe, this is Ian Cron, and today I am joined by my family. It is holiday time, and the Crons and the Vogies are in the house. Woo-hoo-hoo. We have my entire family here for Christmas, and I thought, man, what a great opportunity to do an Enneagram family-based show. So let me, I'm going to go around in the group, and we're just going to talk about life family and the Enneagram and you get a chance to meet my kids and my wife who I talk about all the time on this program of program did I just call this a program the show the show a really big shoe the shoe yes all right let's let's go around and we're going to really focus today on particularly family dynamics as it relates to kids right we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about mom and dad today uh but really more about Enneagram in general your relationships with each other and our as parents relationship with you and Uh, Anyway, we'll just do a big soup of of stuff that I think is going to be fantastic. So let's go around. I wanted you all to introduce yourselves. And uh, let's start with you, Kaylee. I'm Kaylee. Um, I'm the oldest of the three Cron kids. I'm 26 and I'm an eight on the Enneagram, the challenger. So I'm in charge both ways. (laughs) All right. Kaylee's a a challenger. All right. Great. Moving on. Okay. I'm Maddie. I'm the middle child. I am 23 years old and I'm a nine on the Enneagram, the peacemaker. All right. There's Maddie, the peacemaker. Uh, I'm Aiden. I'm the youngest. Uh, I'm 20 years old and I'm a seven on the Enneagram. Which is the? The enthusiast. I am Paul. I'm married to Maddie. I'm 23 and I am also a seven. Mm -hmm. Great. And now moving to mom and dad. This is Anne. I am wife to Ian and mother to Kaylee, Maddie, and Aiden, and mother-in-law to Paul. Also a nine on the Enneagram, which is the peacemaker. Mm, We got two sevens. We got an eight, a nine, a nine, and I am a four. I am a romantic or uh, an individualist, depending on who you listen to. And uh, so... I mean, this is pretty great because we have a family that's pretty diverse. We have three of you who are in the anger gut triad, right, or instinctual triad. We have two of you in the head triad, in the mental center triad, and me alone in the feeling triad. Mm. Even if you weren't alone, you'd feel alone. (laughs) That's true because I am a... Four. Alone. I am an alone. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Maddie. <laughs> so here's one of the great things about Maddie. You know, people try, tend to think of uh, nines as being kind of somewhat retired and quiet. But Maddie has this ability to put the zip just to just to drop the one liner. So pay attention, people. You're going to learn something about nines uh, today. Um, I want to know, because we weren't always an Enneagram family, you know, we had sort of the Crons pre Enneagram and the Crons post Enneagram, right? It was about five years ago, right? We started sort of finding our way more deeply into the Enneagram. Tell folks what life was like before the Enneagram in our family and what it's been like since we've learned about ourselves through it. Everyone's looking at me because I'm the eight. Because you're the eight? And I'm, so I'm supposed to start or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. You start. Um, this is Kaylee. I'm the eight. Well, I remember the first time that I heard about the Enneagram in depth was when you and mom were going to retreat about the Enneagram in New Mexico. And you said that you would pay my way if I would go with you. And I was working a terrible restaurant job and it sounded like a great vacation. So I went to New Mexico with you. And 
learning about, I mean, I knew I was an eight right away, hearing the description right away. I knew that that's what I was. And it's been super helpful since then for me to understand a little bit more of why I'm so angry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, now hold on a second. This is great because I want to, let, let me ask, this, this sort of leads, we'll do this with everybody. How did the rest of us know that Kaylee was an eight before she did? If that's true. I mean, how many, how did we know Kaylee was an eight? Uh, I first started dating Maddie a few years ago. And the first time I came home, Kaylee was coming home that same day. And I was a little bit nervous. I knew Kaylee a little bit from growing up nearby. And uh, Kaylee was holding groceries. And I was like, oh, yeah, let me grab that for you. And uh, Kaylee quickly responded, oh, do I not have arms? <gasps> I do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I, I didn't grab number the groceries. One. <laughs> <laughs> you picked up the heat a little bit, did you? Yes. Uh, I spent my entire childhood in hiding. <laughs> From Kaylee, you're saying from Kaylee. You want to you want to comment? Um, I think there it answered a lot of questions as to why Kaylee got so up in arms about things mm. that I felt so not maybe not apathetic about, but just not nearly as passionate or angry or fired up about. Mm. And I think now maybe I don't fully understand, but I can empathize with how she feels mm -hmm. when before I knew why we were so different it just felt like what's your deal it's fine relax you know right. and, and that's a that's such a nine thing too because like nines often are like react to other people's passion or level you know higher level of energy with sort of a why do people get so worked up about things mm -hmm. you know that that's not a an unusual sort of response for nines which is like i don't really understand why people like get in get the get in a knot about everything right you know? and as maddie was saying what's your deal? It's fine. Relax. I was saying, what's your deal? It's, it's not fine. Why don't you care? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that, um, I used to take it a lot like more personally when Kaylee and I argued, uh, we used to argue a lot more. Um, and you're a seven and I'm a seven. Right. Uh, so I mean, when we, we always used to argue, um, and most of the things we were arguing about Kaylee knew infinite more about it than I did, but I never, you know, gave in because I never wanted to be wrong. Uh, I was never wrong. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, I always took it personally, you know, um, but I didn't realize that, you know, Kelly wasn't making, it, it wasn't personal. It was just, you know, it was just Kelly, you know, it was, it was just how um, she thought and how she approached conversations. Hmm. I was just trying to be close to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because eights uh, can oftentimes sort of, for them, connection yeah, is, conflict gets related to connection, right? Yeah. Great. Annie, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say when Kaylee was a little girl, she was, oh, she was just so passionate about so many things all mm, the time. Yeah. Um, so curious and um, interested in didn't I mean her that passion didn't come out as anger as a as a little girl at all but um, I just appreciated how you know that that sort of assertiveness for her came out in being very curious about things and wanting to learn about things and being highly motivated to to learn and to find out about the world mm. and I think you know once we sort of discovered what an eight is, it did help me as well because I think sometimes I felt, I don't know if intimidated is the right word, but I I felt like I had to to meet Kaylee's sort of assertive aggressiveness. And I, as a nine, I, that, that made me want to, you know, crawl and hide um, as opposed to, you know, meeting her in a way that she needed to be met. And I think m m now I understand that so much more and love her passion and and also i think it's helped us to, to have more humor around our differences mm -hmm. um, and be able to appreciate each other more and not as aiden said not feel not take things personally mm -hmm. right okay great all right so um other comments like what was life like before Enneagram, knowing our family, knowing the Enneagram and afterwards, has it helped? You know, has it been kind of maybe even a pain in the neck? I don't know, but it's definitely funny how aware we are all now that we know of the Enneagram, how often it comes up, how often we say, 
not targeting other people, but saying like, hmm, that's fairly nine of you to say. Mm -hmm. Or, um, And I think we try to keep that to a minimum, but it also is pretty indicative of how much more we understand each other. Mm -hmm. How much, I think, how much growth we've had as well is, I just talking about Kaylee, I think there was a time when her combativeness was could have been really divisive in our family. And now the degree of tenderness that I see in Kaylee that, and I still continue to see every time I see, you know, Kaylee lives in Jordan. So we only see her, you know, three times a year and being with her every holiday. I think I see more growth and more tenderness. Um, and I think that's how effective the Enneagram can be for families. So what would you all tell families that are, you know, just beginning to get into the Enneagram? Like, what would be some of the things to do and not to do? Uh, Aiden, I'm one of the sevens. Um, I think one thing that can uh, be annoying, even if it is helpful sometimes, is when um, people almost try to predict uh, your mistakes by Mm -hmm. your number. Um, So if someone's like, well... You know, uh, I wouldn't trust Aiden with that because he's a seven. He's going to forget about it or something, you know, and, and it almost it can almost whittle you down and make you feel mm. it's like, well, you know, I, I do have the capability to even if I have problems with committing to things, I also have the capability to, you know, counter those problems. Um, so don't you know, it's great after the fact to say, well, you did that. And that, you know, has something to do with, you know, you being a seven or um, can help you solve issues and maybe prevent them but it should never be you know used negatively as a sort prophecy. of a predictor of someone's failures right okay so right so don't use it as a prophecy about mm-hmm. how people are going to behave on the basis of number right an example of when that just happened was maybe two days ago paul this is maddie talking paul and my dad were trying to plan a trip with aiden to go to the grand canyon and they were locked in. We're going in March. We're going to go rafting. This is feeding in so into Paul and Aiden's adventurous sides and my dad wanting to be out in nature. Um, and Actually, I really wanted to do this before I died. <laughs> and, and because our dad is dying of predictions. And Paul was this, is like, actually, this is a good time to ask for donations. Uh, <laughs> Ian needs a new kidney. And if you have one, type O would be really appreciated. Thanks. <laughs> Anyways, so, and we did what Aiden is, is telling us we did, which was sort of prophesize. Aiden, they were trying to get Aiden to lock it in for his spring break. And Aiden said, well, we'll see what happens. You know, I might have, we don't know what's going on that. I don't want to commit yet. And, you know, everyone was kind of saying like, all right, Aiden, you just, you know, you might have something better coming up on the horizon and people are kind of poking fun at him. But right. what he's saying is right is. Yeah. Because sevens are, they stereo i mean not stereo typically seven struggle with commitment uh they don't like to especially make commitments to things too far in advance because other things may come up better options they don't like to be trapped they like trapped they like to have escape hatches right etc and so we were boxing aiden in that moment into saying oh this is just typical this or typical that okay good aiden i just saw you grab the microphone well, well, no i was just gonna say you know there was no no one even really like sort of stopped to ask, well, like, hey, do you want to go? It just assumed that because I wasn't committing in that moment that it was like, ah, oh, he's got better things to do. You okay, know? Well, do- <laughs> Aiden, do you want to go? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens when oh. you use the Enneagram oh. as a prophecy. Oh. <laughs> Gauntlet. Okay, people. Well, you heard it here on Typology. <laughs> There's an open spot on the Grand Canyon yeah, trip. Any of you who'd like to, any sevens who are, but you have to be a seven in order to join us on the yeah. uh, the trip to the Grand Canyon. No fours, please, because uh, we have another seven on the trip and we just don't want to bring them down. Okay? Yeah. Okay, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that I think exploring the Enneagram as a family requires a lot of trust because essentially what you're doing is you're figuring out where people's chinks in their mm, armor are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you have to trust that you're not going to exploit that knowledge. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, in our worst moments, that's exactly what we do. I feel like for me, a lot of times if I'm really fired up about something, which can happen super quickly, mm-hmm. um, and it appears that I'm angry, for people in our family, for you guys who understand the Enneagram, you know that often right underneath that like veneer of anger is sadness or vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And so 
if you kind of poke at that, you know, it might look like I'm on the attack, but really I'm totally on the defense. Yeah. So, and I'm guilty too of knowing what sorts of things will set other people in the family off. So yeah, I think as families, you know, as everyone's learning their number, everyone is being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. As an eight, that's something that I absolutely hate. But I think it's just a matter of trusting the other people in your family to to treat you kindly. Yeah. There was that. I love uh, what we saw yesterday. We went to see uh, Star Wars last night, which I'll come back to. And I just happened to see that poster uh, about the movie Wonder, and it says, choose kind. And I, I thought that was a, a lovely little uh, expression. And, but can I just make a... Uh, an observation about, I think, in real a real life story uh, was today at breakfast. Y- you were expressing a level of frustration and intensity about job hunts and all that stuff, right? Um, and I could tell that underneath that intensity was anxiety and fear and worry. And I could see that tenderness. And I think at that point, I was like, hey, let's move on to another, you know, it was like, it was probably better to move, right. you know? And in that very moment, when it, when I was kind of like pushing back against people, what I was actually doing was like holding back tears. Yeah, we could, I could see it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, darn, you saw right through it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's a good question, though, but did you all see- Time to find a new family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these, these ones know my tricks. <laughs> but, but hold on a second, uh, this is a, that's a great question, because now, Maddie, did you see it? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And part of me wants to get to that point, you know, to, okay. to no, 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 say no, no, like... No, 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 <laughs> Okay, so the well, nine, Maddie's a nine, right? The middle, younger sister to Kaylee, right? Mm-hmm. Great. You want to get to that with well, Kaylee. Well, I think, I mean, I don't know why. Maybe it's just I feel some level of relief that we've broken through this this angry wall of strength that I see in Kaylee that really isn't strength it's sort of a bit of a facade you're strong you're strong but it's still it's still a bit of a mask as to the softness below Mm -hmm. and I think I feel some level of relief where all of a sudden she's feeling feelings that I understand Mm. because that passion and anger about and fear about finding a job I can't connect with but that softer anxiety and the teariness and the what's coming next I can totally connect with and talk with someone about mm. so I do feel some level of relief I think wow that is that's just great family insight for people yeah hey typology tribe I want to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors for helping us bring you what I hope is great content every week now you all know obviously I'm a psychotherapist and so I'm a big proponent of counseling So whether you feel like something is interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving certain goals, counseling is a great tool to help identify what those blocks are and then work through them. Yet, and I think probably many of you know this, finding a therapist can sometimes feel intimidating. Here comes the good news. BetterHelp offers online counseling at your own time and your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions plus text and chat with your therapist when it's convenient for you. That's huge, right? These are licensed professional counselors who specialize in things like depression, anxiety, stress, relationships, LGBT matters, trauma, and grief. BetterHelp has counselors available worldwide and have over three thousand u.s licensed therapists across all 50 states and get this if you're not satisfied with your counselor for any reason you can request a new one at any time at no additional cost best of all it's a truly affordable option and as a special offer for typology listeners better help is offering 10 percent off your first month with the discount code typology podcast so why not get started today go to betterhelp.com slash t-y-p-o-l-o-g-y-p-o-d-c-a-s-t simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you will love again that's betterhelp.com slash 
Typology Podcast, T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y-P-O-D-C-A-S-T, betterhelp.com slash typology podcast. Check them out. So, Paul, you come to the family, you know, you, you and Maddie have been married. So, just so everybody knows, Kaylee, our eight, is 26. Maddie is 23. Aiden is 20. Paul is 23. So, and Paul is married to Maddie. Um, I am 37. And <laughs> I had... Their mom is uh, 108. Th- <laughs> <laughs> and all these children are from my wife's first marriage. Um, That's my line. I know so, um, so Paul coming into the family, we'd already known the Enneagram for a while and stuff, right? And you come from a large family. Um, what was it like coming? What, what did you observe about us? Uh, that because you know you have a whole different perspective. Here's this group of people who know this kooky thing called the Enneagram. Um, what what was what, was it intimidating? Was it weird? Was it what, what was great about it? What was odd about it? Um. Maddie sort of prompted me before the first time I was seeing all of you, like, oh, and by the way, we have this like weird culty thing we do. <laughs> that it'd probably, it'd, it'd probably be good for you to learn it. Um, so I will need some blood, but once, <laughs> once I get the right amount, you'll be you'll be accepted. Um, but I, I remember Maddie first bringing it up and. Uh, you know, reading through some small Enneagram book and she clearly had like bookmarked the seven page far more than the other ones. <laughs> and I was like, wow, like a lot of this rings true. I don't really like what I'm reading, but this is definitely the chapter that I uh, definitely um, see myself as. But coming into this family, I definitely felt I had the most personality traits in common with Aiden, who's also a seven. Um and, you know, that's why we both wanted to go on this Grand Canyon trip and why Aiden's, <laughs> why Aiden's locked into it, you know, <laughs> committed to any of Aiden's friends trying to get him to do spring break. He's going to the Grand Canyon. You will um, tell him how we're doing it, though, because it, it was indifferent. It was my, you know, honoring the seven heart, you know, was what? Well, how are we going to how were we going to go? Oh, yeah. We were going to do the whole thing in a sprinter van. Right. Um, yeah. Eat on the road. Spend the nights driving, days, and at don't the get National dead started Parks. on the matching tattoos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we did talk about the matching tattoos, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, besides that, though, um, yeah, I already told you the first experience with Kaylee, where I thought, like, got it, eight, check, a little intimidating. Um, and exactly what Maddie said rings true, where the more you get to know Kaylee, the more the trick it doesn't have its luster <laughs> it's just a little softer than she lets on um which i've appreciated um but and then seeing ann and ian as well who are very different from my parents and at first i just thought like oh people are different but understanding any angry numbers as well um you know you guys have a very cozy home filled with books filled with like incense and soft music it's like it's <laughs> you make it sound like it's a, like it's a massage envy <laughs> yeah. honestly you might get to be massage envy i wouldn't be surprised um and i grew up in a very chaotic family that was very loud and you know different kinds of books and different kinds of activities um yeah so it was helpful to understand where everyone was at in their thinking how they interacted with one another um and of course, obviously helpful to know yourself as well. Yeah. So, but one of the interesting things about that is, and this goes back to understanding each other, right? So we love Paul. We love, I mean, what a great addition to our family. Um, and, and also just knowing, okay, so Paul's a seven. He does come from a family of real doers, right? You come from a family of doers, right? They're out skiing, you're out doing stuff when you're together. Uh, you're an activity-based family. Is that fair to say? The way you describe fair. it? Fair to say. Okay. And, you know, we're more laid back, right? We, is that, how would you describe fair. it? I don't want to, fair. Okay. <laughs> so, but this time, knowing that when you were coming, like we said, we got to have more to do. Like we got to plan more things. We got to want to make, make sure that, you know, not that we're going to. But I'm not that high maintenance. I didn't require them to do <laughs> no, that. No, it's not that you're high maintenance. It's just that we wanted to have, make sure that you had a great time, right? But also it stretches us in great ways. Like we're going to go do things and see things that maybe we wouldn't normally have, you know, done or because we're also sometimes happy to sit around at home and read. But since you've been there, we've been playing card games. We've been doing crossword puzzles. We've been doing this, what HQ we've been doing. I mean, so anyway, yeah. And hopefully, you know, for you, 
there's also some value in learning about just being, not doing, right? Yeah, just- absolutely. I would say, yeah, stretched in the same way you were saying in the opposite ways. Like, ah, oh, you know, there are a lot of books in this house. And if I can just change my seven frame, like, there's a lot of things to look at. A lot of these books, I can read half of one chapter and then put back <laughs> and never finish. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Now, just out of, I, I'm going to come back to the larger family here in a second, but while I'm talking with you, Paul. Uh, so for you guys as newly married people, right, a year and four months, I'm trying to, five months, I'm trying to, so. Like a year and a half. Right, a year and a half. Um, has the Enneagram featured in your relationship in any way and has it been part of your dialogue or your world i just because actually i don't i actually don't know the answer to that question i've never really i don't assume that it's been a huge part of anything but paul you're like smiling looking at the ground or totally. what do you say matt um this is maddie talking something we've learned recently that i think is going to be hugely helpful for our marriage is the way that we were attracted to each other in a way that enables our flaws and Mm. enables our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the biggest thing for us that we've experienced recently is my areas of hurt and shame and my stories that I want to tell him from before we knew each other well. I often tell myself I'm not worth hearing. Mm. Um, That's sort of the dialogue I hear is, you know, I can let Paul in, but the deepest parts of me are shameful and not worth anyone's time. And in the same way that I feel that way and think, great, I don't need to tell him. Paul expresses without words, I don't want to talk about hard things. And I sometimes don't, with words, <laughs> so occasionally with words uh, as a seven, right? <laughs> right. Okay. He is very avoidant of, painful conversation and we've noticed recently that that may have been part of the reason that we were drawn to each other you know there are good reasons that you're attracted to each other but there are also raw flawed reasons sure shadow reasons Mm -hmm. right and that is the enneagram has been so helpful for that um i could never have put words to paul's avoidance of pain until i knew sevens fear that Um, and I didn't know that I didn't, I I feel like a confident person, but there are parts of me that I feel, you know, that like I'm not worthy of love. And so I think that is a growing area still for us, but the Enneagram has uncovered that, you know, I feel like without the Enneagram, we might've realized this in 50 years, (laughs) but we're only 23. So I feel hopeful Mm -hmm. for our marriage that there's so much growth ahead. Yeah. I think one of the, one of the cool things about anything that um, has the level of wisdom that I think the Enneagram has. And as you guys know, this isn't a religion to us. It's not something that we talk about all the time. It's not something like we're wandering around. You know, we don't have like, you know, plaques in every room with different numbers or, mod- you know, different like healing messages for every number in the bathroom or something, you know. So we do have mugs. We do have mugs. And we're all branded. <laughs> we're all branded, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tattoo, honey. A very hot tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell people about your hot tattoo, man. You know, um, uh, no, but what I was going to say was I don't remember now because we got off on ha- hot tattoos and my mind kind of like was having trouble bending around. It. Yeah. So it's not, it's not really, it's not a religion to us or something like creepy weird like that. But I think what it does do is it saves you time. So I think that's what you're expressing, right? Is that, Man, well, knowing that now, like like your mom and I have oftentimes said, man, if we'd only known this when we were 23, there's so much, it would have saved us so much time. All the time in the world? No, because there are some holes you got to fall into whether you want to or not. But it would have saved us a lot of time. So in a way, I envy you too, because I'm a four and envy is my deadly <laughs> sin. But I envy the two of you because you do have a leg up on us in terms of, you know, the life that you're going to have together. You just have more knowledge about yourselves individually and of each other. And hopefully there's that place where you don't take things as personally. I know it's hard, but to understand that, for example, that the the flaw of sevens is having a hard time talking about painful feelings, um, that that's not 
something that comes up because of you, Maddie, but it's built in. And sometimes it can feel personal, but to be able to understand that and have a sense of compassion for that and know that that's a growing edge for Paul, just like for nines, a growing edge is being able to recognize that our presence does matter and our feelings do matter. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, I I love the way that we're uh, talking about the ways that the Enneagram just sort of, I mean, you keep it in the back of your mind, not at the forefront of your mind. Do you know what I mean? Like this shouldn't be, the Enneagram should not live up here at the prefrontal cortex. Richard Rohr said this on the show a while back. It should be back here at the back of the mind, you know, just sort of like as a reference point, you know, it's, it's back here. You can tap into it when you need it, but you know, it's not like the lens through, you know, the whole world is absolutely seen, you know, it's just, just an observing kind of pool of knowledge. So we, we started off with Kaylee, and what I'd love to do is just talk very briefly. It could be two sentences, because we've sort of deconstructed Kaylee a little bit in eights. I want you all to say about what it is that, as a family member, that you love about having an eight in the family, and specifically Kaylee, right? Not just eights generically, but what is it you love about Kaylee and about having her in our family? I can start. Okay. I love Kaylee's energy. I love her passion. I love her humor. Mm -hmm. I also love the fact that she's growing into someone who feels more able to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's been a real growth in her, Mm -hmm. in her life and in her story. Okay. Aiden, what are you going to say? I think that uh, I'm always, I feel very proud when I talk to my friends about Kaylee um, and about having her in the family. Um, because she almost feels like a protector. Mm. Um, and you know, uh, she's like, she can be equal parts loving and caring when you're there, uh, and when you need it. Um, and then sometimes, you know, it feels like you just have, you know, like the mob enforcer in the family, you know, like if anybody lays a finger on my brother, I swear to God, I'm coming after him. (laughs) Um, I got a lot of space for you in my trunk. <laughs> right. Um, and that's, and that's great. You know, it, it, uh, that kind of, um, unwavering loyalty is, is great. Uh, and you feel, you do feel protected. Um, so I think that's my favorite part. Mm, right. Being a protector. Paul, um, this determines whether or not you can stay in the sure, family. Sure. From exactly. Kaylee's perspective. High pressure here. I'm taking notes. Um, I was going to say in reference to what Aiden was saying about the protector piece, um, you know, it's fun. Sometimes I remember like Kaylee's like five, two, five, three, maybe 95 pounds. <laughs> right. And it's like, I know it's so flattering. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, I, I can't believe that the passion, you just sort of make her bigger in your mind. Like the biggest person in the room. It's like, actually you could fit inside like a very small Prius with four, <laughs> 14 of you. Um, but uh, something I really appreciate from an outsider's perspective um, in the Kron family is Often you mentioned this a little bit, but you guys are sort of okay, just like chilling. And there definitely is that side to Kaylee, but there's also a side like when we pull up to a place and throw the car in park, there's like at least five minutes where no one is opening the door. And often you end up in the middle seat and it's like, why is no one getting out of this car? Like there's nothing pressing. And Kaylee will finally be the person like, okay, like we need to get out of the car. It's time to get out of this car. And from someone who's thinking that but doesn't want to say it because, again, I'm just an in-law, I think, like, why is no one getting out of the car? Like, this is the weirdest thing that even just pulling on this handle is, like, a non-laid-back thing for the crons to do. Okay, can I just uh, – a couple Dad's of things. I think, I think we just need to have a couple of cars. First of all, out of curiosity, what other things have you been thinking? Yeah, <laughs> what else uh, is there, Paul? That you haven't you're been just, you're just an in-law, and, after all. And – at the beginning of your remarks, I was going to say, oh, you're not an outsider, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> Continue. Just answer. The summary of that was Kaylee can often be, when you, you five are left to your own devices, can be the rudder that moves this boat somewhere. <laughs> and without Kaylee, you might be stuck in irons for any sailors out there. <laughs> Great. So I called Kaylee a, a protector and poured my heart out. And, and you just said she's good at opening car doors. <laughs> that's, what, that's what she can do. Well, both of those are true. <laughs> Maddie, what were you going to say? Um, I think something I really appreciate about Kaylee is her engagement with social justice mm-hmm. and her, I feel like she cares for the weak in the world 
and she's also so well informed. Mm -hmm. So whereas for me, I think I hear a story about refugees and my heart hurts for Kaylee. Her heart hurts and she jumps into action. Kaylee will so graciously compile information about something she's read, say, with an upcoming vote or um, to do with something happening in our towns locally. Mm -hmm. And she'll say, hey, Maddie and Paul, this is happening in Denver. If this is something you're passionate about, email this person or here's a form letter. Um, And it's not judgmental. But it's also recognizing, hey, I know you guys might not have seen this. You might not have read this. But it's important and I feel passionate about it. And it actually is her sort of saying, hey, here's a way that you can love me and and care for the world. Um, and I really appreciate that about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, Kaylee, what I remember is I there was recently a vote in, uh, going on in congress i guess and you sent out a saying uh if you guys care about this like maddie was saying and i said i don't know how to do that you said well text resist i mean you sent directions and you know like this is how you can get involved in changing the world and as maddie said i'm a you know that's not necessarily my jumping off spot you know so that was awesome yeah well and i think that um if I can just say what I like about myself in this family <laughs> very quickly. Oh, yeah, feel um, free. Three hours later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anthony, you might have to edit this down. Um, no, but I think that that's, that is something that, I'm, that I've grown into. Um, I think in the past I would have just kind of either raged silently or raged quite loudly at the fact that no one else seemed to care. Um, but now that I know that, you know, Maddie, you have the heart to care about these things, but it's not, um, perhaps in your nature to, to jump and do something about them. Um, I feel safe kind of giving you the tools that maybe you need in order to take action on the things that you care about. Um, and I think I'm also you know, coming to a place, especially with you and with mom, of seeing how there are things that you care about. And in fact, you care a lot. You just care in different ways. Um, I think both of you really, really care in your interpersonal relationships and you're really nurturing in those relationships. Um, And I'm really happy. I guess I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I'm really happy to have nines in the family who remind me that you don't need to always rage against the system in order to be caring. That's not the Mm -hmm. only way that you can show kind of your engagement and your love for the world. Um, And I think that's a great point of balance Mm -hmm. in our family Mm -hmm. um, and has allowed me to also appreciate people outside of our family um, who I might, uh, without the Enneagram, have been really frustrated with because they just don't seem to care And now I just see that they care for the world in different ways. Mm. Um, So thank you for helping me appreciate that. That's wonderful. Hey, everybody. One of the lessons I've learned over the years is that not everybody benefits from a traditional 50-minute counseling session. And this is why some people can go to couples therapy or personal counseling for a long time and never really get anywhere. This is why I'm such a believer of intensive counseling and my friends at Restoring the Soul in Colorado, created by my longtime friend Michael Cusick to help couples or individuals experience deep change and have day blocks over one or two weeks. Now listen, if you can't wait months or years to get to the bottom of an issue or to experience breakthrough, you need to get in touch with my friend Michael and his extraordinary team of counselors at Restoring the Soul. If you're looking to get out of the rut you're in but can't wait months or years, call Restoring the Soul today for a free consultation with Michael's staff. Call 303-932-9777 and learn how their intensive counseling process can help you as a special bonus just for typology listeners make sure to visit www.restoringthesoul.com slash typology to download their pdf called five ways unaddressed trauma may be derailing your relationships all right so let's um, let's move on to sevens 
I want to talk about Aiden for a second. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> so we're done with seven, the, we're done with the introduction. We had to go right? through and do like draw little dotted lines between personality disorders and every single number. I guess we just learned that sevens really start with narcissism. <laughs> um, so uh, jumping in, I, I want to. Oh, let me just say something about Kaylee because I didn't get a chance to share my 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 appreciation thing about Kaylee. And we'll circle back to Aiden in just a second. So just quick tangent. I actually love it when I get, and this happens often, I get to Kaylee's physical tenderness. When I get to hold her, to touch her, to, you know, to do her back rubs, to do the head, you know what I mean? Like to give you know, head massages. I just, uh, there's something, and I think part of that is that. <laughs> Massage envy. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I'm the only one in the feeling center in this family. And right now no, I, we feel, know what you're I feel ashamed and abandoned. <laughs> but just that plus the incense and the book. It, we are, you know. Plus the okay. 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 appointment. Wait, wait, wait. We're going back no, to no. sevens. You can finish. Please continue. The fountain of praise still flows. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that, that I think when, when you're uh, affectionate, right. Um, and I am, I'm a, you know, I come from a, I'm a tactile person. I like to touch people. I, I put my arm around people. I, you know, you guys are really like very seventh grade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go to seventh. Shall we go for it? <laughs> what I really like about Kaylee is her directness. Let's talk about sevens now. Um, so sevens, the enthusiasts, joy bombs. I am um, just the kind of people who illuminate a room with their enthusiasm for life, their, yeah, just their passion for discovering new things, for expressing the things that they are learning. Uh, and I mean, this is, sevens are so much of the energy source or font in my in my own personal life how did you all know that aiden was a seven can you think of an iconic moment when you were like oh he's a seven well this is Anne, mom talking um when aiden was a little from the time he was a little boy he always had a hard time when the opportunity came up for you know, more than one party to go to or more than one play date, more than one friend asking him to do something. And and it was just the worst experience for Aiden to actually choose which friend he wanted to play with or, you know, what direction to go in. There was always conflict. Um, right, because he, he wanted he want to do it all. Yes, he wanted to do it all. Right. It was, you know, to in, in the sort of zero in on one, but meant to say, to say yes to one meant to say no to the other. And that was like, is, is that kind of how you felt, Aiden? Is that? Uh, well, I was certainly popular. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, oh, oh, no. And I think I think that um, it wasn't just that I would I would go from one thing um, to the next, uh, sometimes in ways that I'm sure people were like, well, that was kind of rude. Um, you know, I'd say, you know, uh, I'd often frame it as, well, I had plans, you know, with this person, but really I made those plans while I was with someone else, you know? Um, and, you know, I did that to, it's not like I preferred, you know, that it was, I was going to things that I preferred or uh, to do things with people that I preferred spending time with. Um, I did this to everyone, you know, uh, if I was with my friends, you know, uh, at their house, then I'd go to someone else's house and then I'd leave that after a while, go somewhere else. Uh, so it, was, it wasn't always choosing between, two things um it was sometimes just jumping from one thing to the next and i can think of another example of aiden uh just having that adventuresome spirit mm -hmm. he as a junior in high school spent his year living in italy and studying in italy and living with the family and that well that was unusual for you know someone who's a junior in high school but uh his uh dad and I laughed so hard when he was still in Italy. He was about ready to come home. It was, you know, May, the end of the school year. And he got all excited telling us about wanting to go to England for the summer. 
and do a program at Oxford. And we just thought that was the, the most hysterical thing because here he was, you know, still living this amazing adventure in Italy. And he's already thinking about the next adventure that he wants to go on while he's in the middle of that adventure. Mm. Yeah. I also remember. Um, Kaylee. Tell, yes, tell this is Kaylee, the eight. Um, when Eden was getting ready to apply to college, you know, I I was in college at the time. And so I was asking him questions about, you know, what sort of school do you think you'd like to go to? Um, and I'm a person of, as an eight, a person of certainty. I applied early decision and I got in and I went and I was very confident in my decision. And Aiden goes, well, you know, I've just been thinking, Kale, that I think, you know, I want to go um, to a couple of different schools. And so maybe what I'll do is, you know, I'll do a year one place and then I'll transfer to another place. And, you know, because then I'll just get to kind of experience everything and do, you know, like maybe a small school for a year and then a big school for a year. And my jaw just hit the floor. Like, I, w I was like, what? On why would you want to do that? Like, don't you want to make lasting friendships? And he was kind of like, well, I, you know, I'd have like a ton of friends. <laughs> and, and it just, I think um, that's what, just one time where I saw how different our numbers are. Mm. Um, and that we're, we're both very passionate numbers. Um, his passion goes in a million directions at once. Um, and I think that can be a really, really wonderful thing. And probably also as an eight, I imagine that would be a very difficult thing too for you as a seven. Mm. Okay. All right. What about you, Matt? You got an Aiden? How'd you know Aiden was a seven moment? Um, well, one thing that I've noticed about sevens is almost an absent-mindedness sometimes because they're actually not in the present moment. They, mm -hmm. They're not even existing where they are. They are already on the next thing or the next, next, next thing. And I just remember Aiden getting into some trouble at school because of how messy his backpack was, mm -hmm. where he'd come home and he'd be looking for homework and he'd pull out things you hadn't seen in months. Including lunches. Seriously. So that's what I was going to say is I recall his backpack starting to smell disgusting <laughs> just horrible and we were insistent like Aiden something's going on you should go through your backpack and he's no no it's fine it's fine there's just homework there's just papers in there there's nothing and months went by and we finally opened his front pocket be and the smell had gone away at this point because honestly it had already died it was fossilized it was <laughs> <laughs> seriously and a clementine had rotted and then turned actual into dust. <laughs> a dusty clementine. In his front pocket. And that's, I think I see that a lot being married to a seven too, is just this, he, he didn't, it didn't even occur to him that that could have happened. He was so far somewhere else outside of the present moment. Um, and that happens often with Paul too, just like a absent-mindedness. Mm, funny, because Paul's actually looking at you right now like there's no, there's just absolutely no way in a million years that I would ever have a Clementine in my backpack <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah, for eight months at a time. Paul, you want to add anything about, like, like you're a seven. How did you, did you know that Aiden was a seven? Yeah. Um, I guess this, this is probably more background than you need for this, but uh, at, for a few years, Aiden and I were at the same summer camp. Um, and even though there's a, a three-year gap difference, for a lot of those years, Aiden and I were really good friends for that reason. Um, you know, summer camp is a perfect spot for a seven, Aiden included, where he was just describing going from one friend's house to another friend's house to another friend's house, probably all in one Saturday when he was 10 or 11. Well, now put him like no parents, no rules, a million activities, and you can actually do them all at once if you want. You know, like... Take the archery stuff, take it down to the lake, go sailing with the <laughs> archery stuff, bring seven kids with you. Um, so it's very evident that Aiden's a seven, even at a very, very young age. Um, yeah, put in that sort of perfect, like all variables being held even. That's like where you see where sevens are is a, a summer camp scenario. So mm. for myself, it's uh, energizing to be with another seven. Um you know, you can so often be the only one in a room and then it's like, oh man, this guy is like making us do stuff. Like, I don't want to play flag football. I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And Aiden's like another yes man. Um, yeah. Especially with the Grand Canyon trip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to that because I know having two sevens that every time I say, let's go, both of you will yell shotgun at precisely yeah. the same moment and run toward the, the, the sprinter that we're going to be renting in Denver. <laughs> 
going through Whitefish, Montana, as we go to see Glacier National Park on our way to see the Grand Canyon uh, and also to raft down it with a, uh, you know, a naked rafting company. I'm just kidding. That was a seven <laughs> thing to say. Just adding that in. Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kaylee, what are you going to say? No, Sting is not going on the trip. Okay, so um, Aiden, seven in the family. What's that like? And having another seven in the family? Or oh, being well, a seven in the family? you start there. Being a seven in the family. Um, well... Uh, I love being a seven. Um, Why is that? uh, I don't know. I think, uh, I think I like having a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Um, People always like, don't you have to sleep at some point? And I'm like, nope. You know, I, I, I do. I love, you know, I love having a lot of energy. Um, And I love, uh, you know, riling people up and having, uh, and having a good time. Um, I think being a seven in the family uh, is probably well for a while i didn't even really realize i was doing it but a great example would be um if you call if if you if a family member calls me if anyone calls me uh and i miss the call or anyone texts me if i do not text back or call back right away i won't um so uh probably for my sisters and my parents um uh learning the enneagram has helped them understand i have to be a little more forceful with aiden when it comes to communication um and you know that's still uh still a thing um and it will continue to be one uh, and i do that to everybody equally um, so you think seven you say seven struggle in terms with communicating with others because it's not uh sevens are very good at communicating uh especially in person um i have no trouble i mean i guess maybe i over communicate sometimes uh you know i get too excited about telling a story or um that kind of thing uh but when it comes to communicating, you know, in that way, when you're distant from someone, um, I mean, imagine how hard it is to communicate when you're, when you're with someone and always thinking about the next thing, but then imagine being, you know, like this semester when I was all the way in London, imagine being all the way, you know, thousands of miles away from someone, uh, and, you know, trying to figure out communication as a seven. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, that's one of the things that, I know I need to work on um, is I just need to uh, communicate better. Is it because uh, you get distracted? Like you get texts or like as a seven, you just kind of get like so much is going on and you can't get to, every, you know, focus on. It's also, um, it's one of those th- things. Uh, and there are many of them as a seven, um, especially little things, things that, you know, take two seconds or uh, you know, a two-minute phone call, or writing an email, things like that. Those are the things that I think, at least as me as a seven, that I neglect the most. Um, most people would say, "Well, that's stupid because it takes two seconds." You'd think that those would be the things that we're good at, um, but it's because it's so easy to say, "Well, it takes two seconds." I'm always going to have two seconds at some point. I can do that later. I can do that later. I can do that later, and constantly pushing it off. Um, so, yeah, I think that I think that is that that's difficult. Mm-hmm. Well, and I also think this is Kaylee the eight, um, that our numbers uh, impact the way that we try to communicate with Aiden. I mean, I think we're always kind of projecting our our own numbers onto other people um, when we're less cognizant of how they're different from us. Um, So as an eight, I actually, I've noticed sometimes that I consciously, even if I'm thinking of Aiden, I don't reach out to him. I don't call him. I don't text him because as an eight, someone who's very present oriented and deep in where I am at my worst, out of sight, out of mind about anything else that's going on in my life, I hate the, or I've sometimes I resent the phone call or the text that pulls me away from the depth of experience where I am. Mm. And so sometimes I'll project that on Aiden and be like, oh, you know, he's so loving his semester in London. He must be, as another passionate number, just doing it 200%. And I don't want to encroach on kind of his experience where he is. Um, And what's been interesting, I think, especially is to see how Maddie, as a nine sibling, has 
handled that so differently. Okay, so are are you saying then that um, part of the challenge that you have to push back against as an eight is to th- assume that that's where Aiden's at and that it's best to leave him alone and that you're maybe realizing that communication, like something you've learned from Maddie, you need to place a higher value on coming out of that that mind space. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I think our first instinct is to always assume that other people want and need exactly what we want and need when mm-hmm. we're in their position. Mm-hmm. And so, and I think that's true for, for every number. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes I forget that Aiden's a seven. I just assume that he wants and needs exactly what I would want. Mm-hmm. Well, this is Anne. And as a mom, Aiden made a really good point about those of us who interact and communicate with Aiden need to push him to grow in making sure to be present. And I think as a nine, I want to avoid pushing Aiden's buttons, you know, and avoid, oh, he's just going to think I'm nagging him. But understanding what Aiden's tendency is as a seven was really helpful for me to know, okay, I need to press him on this and I need to not worry that it might create conflict between us if I push him to do this or to get, you know, to get this done, to make sure that he does that little thing that he is avoiding um, because it's important. Right. You know, if I could jump in and interrupt really quick with a question. This is Anthony Skinner, producer of the show. Uh, Aiden, as a seven, how do you prefer to be pursued or what's the most effective way to pursue you um, in relationship? Face-to-face, text, calls, like how does all this work? Um. Well, I think, uh, I don't know, Paul, if you'd agree with this, um, but I, as a seven, and I'm sure this is pretty consistent across the board, uh, I, uh, texting and things like that and emails, they just, it doesn't really work. Um, for me, especially if I want to tell a story or talk about my life, I, I get so, ex- like, I get so excited about saying everything that I just can't, I don't like it, it the texting thing doesn't work. So a phone call is is great um and maybe just call and call and uh be forceful and when you're around a seven um you know if you're around a seven and that seven's about to go you know off to college or or, you know go abroad or something like that form a plan um and say we need to talk this much no exception uh and you have to be forceful uh because if it doesn't seem serious really easy for me to say, ah, it doesn't really matter that much. They didn't seem to care that much. Um, so, uh, you know, you have to be a little, um, this is one of the places where you can use the Enneagram to, as a predictive measure. Um, if you were to say, well, Aiden's going abroad, he's going to have trouble communicating. You'd be absolutely right. Um, and so knowing that, uh, don't wait, uh, till I'm abroad to, to reach out to me and figure that out, maybe figure something out beforehand. Um, and cause I think that that's when I'm most likely to, you know, if I have a strict plan and I, and I make a habit of it, um, that helps me overcome a lot of the, you know, a, a lot of the commitment problems. Mm-hmm. So let's just, uh, very, very quickly. Uh, I, I was going to say one more thing about it, Paul. Oh, about Paul, another yeah. seven, Paul, the seven. Um, yeah. So getting another seven in the family, uh, was obviously great. Um, someone of equal energy, as Paul was saying. Um, I think it was also really good because uh, I think there were a lot of things that I didn't realize were just, you know, issues that I had uh, that I was just saying, I think all sevens have that problem. Um, So being able to stand up next to Paul, observe Paul more closely in his life uh, has allowed me to um, figure out what it is that I am personally, that I am personally bad at or personally struggling with. Um, not just things that, you know, all seven struggle with. So Paul, for example, uh, is, you know, he might be, uh, have issues with commitment or whatever, uh, but he's a lot more organized than me. Um, he's a lot more goal focused than me. And, um, you know, he might have a lot of aspirations, but he can settle down and he can focus. Uh, whereas I was, you know, after seeing him and meeting him and learning about his life, kind of realized, well, I have very, very bad attention problems. You know, like I, I should probably work on this more seriously uh, because Paul 
is not struggling with that at all. This is not just a seven thing. This might be a me thing. Mm. Is that true, Paul? Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to say it. what Aiden said is true. Um, yeah, I, I don't have the same probably attention problems Aiden has. I definitely can be quote unquote focused in a room, but thinking about something tomorrow or for a week from now or two weeks from now, um, definitely. So in that mm. way, I really em- uh, empathize with Aiden where it's, it is hard to be in the present when the future seems more exciting, even mm. though at one point your present was your future and it was exciting and you don't really get to experience it for real when you're actually in the present. Um, <laughs> well said. Yeah. Well said. Oh man, that, that is fantastic. All right. Uh, so, uh, quickly, um, one or two sentences what we love about having a seven in our family. Oh, I love Aiden's energy, his excitement, his enthusiasm. He's he's also in the you know in the thinking triad, so he's he is up in his head a lot, um, and it's it's fun when you can draw that out of him. And uh, yeah, I just I love um, and his humor, the way the way he can turn a phrase or just make me laugh. Hmm. I think that sometimes our family can have a tendency to not everyone but sometimes we brood a little bit you know we like dad being a four likes to think about sad things and talk about things that are not lighthearted. and Aiden is always among the first to crack a joke to get people laughing to um break that sort of broodiness in the family and i think that that's really unique and and makes being all together both deep and really fun yeah i just appreciate i said this earlier but i appreciate having someone in the family who has an intensity and an energy that i also experience um albeit in a slightly different way um i know that you're someone who can uh hold up to some verbal sparring and who's equally as excited to tell a story or um, yeah, to get deep into a passionate conversation about something. Mm. So I, um, one of the things I love about Aiden is his curiosity. Um, we, we spent a week together in England, uh, I guess a year ago this past Easter. Um, we spent Easter week on a, at King's college, Cambridge uh, on a, week-long exploration of the passion and T.S. Eliot's four quartets. And when Aiden throws himself into something like that, I mean, you know, he's reading the poems. He's, I mean, he is all in. I mean, we are staying in the rooms at Cambridge. Uh, We're running from one thing to the next. And, you know, he just would, first of all, be curious to learn about everything. And he was with some great, great lecturers who were there. But also the two of us just that he would be so excited about everything that we were doing next and able to point to what was so wonderful about what we were doing in that moment. You know, that was uh, just so good to have that, that type of person in our, in our family, you know? Yeah. I think one thing that's been great about introducing the Enneagram uh, as annoying as it can be for a seven, I think sometimes, especially, um, but uh, sevens obviously push a lot down. Um, and, uh, like Maddie said, yes, I can, you know, in, there's a lot of good ways in which I bring optimism, uh, and joy. Um, but I can also be overly optimistic, overly joyful and hide, you know, from the other stuff. So now that the family is aware of that, um, it was kind of like, wait a minute, you know, there's a lot about Aiden that, you know, you know, I know a lot about what Maddie struggles with, what Kaylee struggles with, you know, um, but I'd like to know a little bit more about Aiden. Um, so I think that's good. And it's also, you know, it makes you a little more aware of something's a little off about Aiden, you know, he's, you can tell he's hiding something. Um, and I should go talk to him cause he's not going to come to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, particularly when it's about something that we know is, has emotional content. Right. right, exactly. Right, or it might be about something that has difficult or afflictive emotions associated with it, right? Well, and it's also taught us, don't let you get by with it for too long, you know? But we have to say, what's going on here? You know, like, something's, something's up, you know? All right, so, um, Maddie, what's it like to be a nine in the Kron family? Hmm. Peacemaker. Well, 
I really love having a mom who's also a nine. I think probably growing up, I don't even realize how helpful that was. Having a mom who empathized. uh, I used to, when people would get upset with me in school, and I have a few, I can remember a girl sending me a mean message on Facebook when I was maybe in middle school. I couldn't sleep. I, I couldn't function. I couldn't do homework. It was all I thought about. And having a mom who understood that was help, helped me to feel so known. Um, I think that's one thing about being in this family that's been amazing as a nine. Um, I think it's also nice to feel known by people, especially in this holiday. I've taken many a nap and it's very <laughs> funny, but I th- think people also recognize that I get worn down. Just being alive makes me tired. <laughs> For nines? That's true. Make, say that again. Being alive makes me tired. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think I feel, I feel known by our family. Mm, right. It's beautiful. So, wh- what's it been like for us to have Maddie in the family, having a nine in our midst? Uh, I think um, when I was much younger um, and when Kaylee and I used to argue a lot more, um, when I still took it personally and I still always engaged and, and you know, um, uh, I think for a little while, uh, I saw all my friends at school, you know, they were always fighting with their siblings um, and I think I kind of always felt like y- you, you know, you, you just can't have, you know, a close relationship with your siblings for a little while. Um, and you know, Kelly and I argued for a long time about a lot of different stuff and it was all just useless and meaningless and unnecessary. Uh, cause it was, a lot of it was just Kelly. Except that I felt close to you. Right. Right. I felt the same way. Um, <laughs> no, I think Maddie was the first, uh, Maddie is the one who made me realize that that's, that doesn't have to be true. And, and I think that uh, really helped my relationship with Kaylee. Um, Cause it was like, I'm missing out uh, on a lot of things uh, by not having a strong relationship with Kaylee uh, because Maddie was so um, just really involved herself in my life. Um, and so not only did, was did I benefit from that relationship with Maddie that Maddie initiated and Maddie created and formed um, but it just drastically helped my relationship with Kaylee. Just to clarify really quickly and maybe to defend my young self, um, Maddie was a great accomplice in terrorizing Aiden when we were young. So <laughs> I just want to make sure that our nines don't get let off the hook here. Maddie I'm was perfect. not asleep our entire childhood. <laughs> she was, in fact, also dressing Aiden up as a doll and making him do things for us. So... Um, just want to make that clear. I did not act alone. Yeah. We've spent a lot of money to make those memories go away. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for bringing them back. Kelly. Oh, that Thank is you. funny. Cool. All right. Who else? What's like that? What's like for us to have a nine like Maddie in our family? So obviously Maddie and I had had that peacemaker connection. So I can definitely relate to her on that level. I think Maddie was always pursuing uh, relationships or, or had a lot of relationships because she, you know, was just easy, easy going, easy to get along with, fun to be around. But the thing I appreciate so much about Maddie now is just all the, the work that she's done to become a, a really healthy nine, someone who is not so afraid of conflict that um, she runs away from it. She's been able to confront and also recognize that her presence matters and to really pursue growing and learning and understanding herself. And um, that's been huge for for her. And, and also it's been actually a lesson for for me as, you know, even as her, you know, older mom to to see that in her and to to aspire to that in my own life too. Um, I think that looking back on our childhood, I see some of the ways that as an eight, maybe I unconsciously took advantage of how easygoing Maddie was. 
we shared a room, but because I'm an eight, it was probably more like um, Maddie was a visitor in my room, you know, just in the way that I kind of colonized the space and in the way that, um, you know, we, we spent every moment together and most of those moments we were doing what I wanted to do. And Abusing so I, me. <laughs> um, so I think that if Maddie were a different type of person, maybe now that she's aware of her number, she'd be exacting revenge. Um, but I think that knowing the Enneagram has really helped in our relationship for me to recognize the times when I'm like totally railroading her. And I think more so than that, like I've just noticed how Maddie as a nine asserts herself far more now than she ever did before we kind of began learning about the Enneagram as a family. And I think that's really improved our relationship because it doesn't feel so lopsided. And I think that, I don't know, it makes me really excited to see the times when Maddie does state what she needs and what she wants. Because as an eight, that's something that I really respect in people um, is when they state those needs. Mm. Yeah, I. <clears throat> so uh, there's a couple of years ago, Maddie came home and she said that uh, she wanted to get a tattoo. And I was like, what? Like, you want to get a tattoo? Really? And um, so... I, I, and Andy, you and I went back and forth on this, right? You were like, I don't know, I don't know. And I was like, well, I don't know, man. And I, you know, this is a kid who, you know, she's involved in church. She's never gone to church, you know, never gone to church. This is not like a kid who's like getting a tattoo, like a skull and crossbone on her arm, you know? Uh, and, and the fact that the verse, and this was before we knew a lot about the Enneagram, the verse that she picked a Bible verse to go on her arm, which was peace be still. I mean, this is right out of a playbook, right? Like that an Enneagram 9, a peacemaker, would have peace be still tattooed on her arm. And I, I think that, that that points to the gift that I think that Maddie brings for me and to our family is a sense of calm. I mean, you know, you're a passionate 8, right? Aiden, you're a passionate, kind of fired up 7, right? I'm a 4 who can get, you know, sort of angsty, you know, and... and uh, sort of lost in the, the feeling space, you know, at times. And Maddie kind of brings the balm, you know. Uh, the, she kind of kind of brings the calm in in a way that's not, when a nine's not very healthy, I think what they do is they bring a kind of calm that's a little bit more like um, they bring the numb. You, you know what I mean? Like they kind of just like make the space, they kind of narcotize the space, like put everybody to sleep, you know, in a way that gets everybody out of their, their thing but Manny brings calm which is legit it's like a legit shalom comes into the space for me what are you gonna say Kill? well just just one more thing um I'm really grateful for the way that Maddie will is, is she's such a good listener and I might be venting about something or very worked up about something and she listens and then affirms my feelings and then very with such care shows me the other side mm -hmm. of the story just like a great nine showing you the other side yeah. of the story yeah um but but she's able to do that without saying look how myopic you are mm. she's able to say i totally understand how you feel that way you know consider this and i think that's for me the kind of stillness or the peace that she brings to our family and brings to me. Mm. Yeah, I think I would add, um, we have a, a family uh, of thinkers. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes, um, uh, most people, when you, you come to them with a problem, you say, dealing with this, they'll say, okay, I understand. And then they'll say, like, this is what we're going to do next. You know, we're going to go through this path, do, uh, and that's great. Um, but what Maddie does that I don't think anyone else I really know in my life uh, does is she says I understand and then she just sort of holds you mm -hmm. um, and that is very very refreshing sometimes because at some point you're going to have to face that problem uh, but sometimes you just have to just be silent and you know be with that problem and understand it um, and Matt is the only person that will sit down on a couch when you're having a problem uh, 
and just listen and then wait. Uh, she won't overwhelm you with solutions or uh, any of those things. She'll just be there as a presence and a calming presence. So I think, you know, peace be still, that, that, that sort of embodies um, like my whole relationship with Maddie. Hmm. Sweet. Okay, so I don't know what it was like for you guys, but this was a remarkably enlightening, at times moving um, conversation with you. I mean, I learned things in our time together today that I had anticipated uh, learning, and uh, I'm just deeply appreciative. This was a, a sort of a Christmas gift to me, this, uh, this conversation. And uh, so Maddie and Aiden and Annie and uh, Paul and Kaylee, thank you so much for your willingness to share your lives. And I mean, I'm just, I just can't say how thankful I am that you are my family and uh, that you are my kids, my wife, you're my, the people that God has given to me to do this journey of life with. And I'm just so thrilled that uh, I get to do it with you. So thanks. Thanks, Yeah. And oh, by the way, thank you, Anthony Skinner, my wonderful producer. Thanks, Anthony. Happy to be here. Anthony, the man. Remember, as we go to the new year, the words of Oscar Wilde, be yourself. Everybody else is already 